Hi, this is James Page in Madrid at the FTTH Council Europe meeting and I'm here with Catherine Collins from OpenReach where she is the Managing Director of Corporate Affairs. Uh, Catherine, thank you for coming and having a little conversation with us. Um, you're uh, talking here about the UK situation and we've just had the new numbers published in the Panorama report yesterday. As always, well, they, people talk about uh, the UK lagging behind but, but some good numbers in terms of catching up fast. Where do you think we are? Look, I think uh, we're in a really good position. As you say, the numbers that came out uh, yesterday, this morning, show what a rapid pace we're moving at in terms of the UK and fully fibring the UK. Look, I, I think we all know we started from a different position. There's historic reason why we started there, because we invested heavily in the superfast network, which actually has done the UK incredibly proud. You know, it ensured that we had some of the highest penetrations of e-commerce across most of the world, actually, not just Europe. Uh, and it stood us up very well during COVID. You know, it got us through us transitioning to working from home, uh, schooling from home, but we all know we need a future-proof network that is full fibre. Um, and we've only really been going at this for sort of five-ish years in the UK. Um, and we've now got to well over 40% UK coverage. With open reach, um, we hit a 10 million FTTP target um, just the last month or so. That's pretty much, as I said, from a standing start 10 years ago. And we're building at a rate of 54,000 premises per week, just as open reach. Uh, so I think in terms of pace, we're building probably as a single operator faster than any other operator or potentially any other European country has ever done. So we built 3 million FTTP premises next year and are planning to repeat that next year. So we started from a position where we were further behind than others on the journey, but I think we are rapidly accelerating. We'll probably overtake quite a few countries because we have a plan also to try and get to those really hard, ultra-rural, really difficult communities in a way that some others don't. So I think at some stage, hopefully, you'll see us overtake. Really interesting. So is that part of the strategy now at OpenReach is thinking about those rural areas? But it, it's also about, and others have, uh, have spoken about it while we're here, there's the build, but then there's also making sure we've got people on the networks, so and that's important too, right? Yeah, look, I think, I've, I think the challenge is how do you fully fibre the entire UK, and that's what I want to talk about later. You know, it's, it's not just getting to the easy sort of suburban, urban areas, it's how do you actually get that connectivity to absolutely everyone so that they can make use of the networks and also so then public services are genuinely ubiquitous. So we've always had a commitment as OpenReach and I think we're the only operator to do a balanced build. So we've said we'll build in proportion in those really hard to reach areas as well as in the more commercial urban suburban and we're doing that with our own funding and our own money. Uh, so we've built of that 10 million full fibre footprint in the UK, 3 million of that is in the hardest to reach Ofcom Area 3. And our intention is to continue to do that. Um, as you say, though, the bigger challenge is you can build the network, but there's no point in having the network unless you've got people on it. Uh, it it's been, I think, a little bit slow as a start to try and transition people onto that network, partly because we have a great super fast network that has worked for most people most of the time. And we know that full fibre is a future proof technology for things people will want to do um, in the future, but currently super fast kind of works for most people. Uh, so we are in a process of how do you move an entire population onto a new network, which means we need to talk more about the benefits, in particular the reliability, the latency, um, you know, the potential benefits that people have at home in terms of how they want to live future lives, Internet of Things, connected fridges, etc. Um, but it, it's, it's been tricky because you have this existing legacy platform. I do think we're starting to crack it. Um, so again, of that 10 million platform we've got, we've now got 3 million customers on an FTTP product. So that's a little bit beyond 25%. Um, which is pretty good, actually, given you've got this very good, ubiquitous, super fast coverage. Uh, and we are definitely seeing that the ISPs in the market are now making that very big shift to really going for trying to transition customers onto the network. And that's partly why we've got deals out in the marketplace, such as Equinox, which are all designed in partnership with the ISPs to ensure we can migrate the country, hopefully more rapidly, onto a full fibre network. Thank you for for that explanation. I think it's really interesting because having talked to lots of people out here, there, there's so many similarities with what's happening in other nations. Lots of different dates for when they've got the copper uh, switch off and, and thinking about how they're managing to get their, their coverage levels up. Uh, while you're here, I suppose it's a, it's a two-part question really in the sense of, of 
what could we learn from what, what they're doing? But given the pace of acceleration that we've got in the UK, are there things that they ought to be learning from us too? Um, I, yeah, I, I, I think that's true. I think, look, the benefit of going last potentially in the full fibre build is that we've been able to learn from others. So I think the one thing that we have done and we continue to do at events like this is learn how other people have done the rollout. And so we as OpenReach have spent quite a lot of time going around not just European countries, but sort of globally, South Korea, you know, other America, places that are sort of slightly further advanced in the journey, looking at the technology. So I think one of the reasons behind the success of the UK rollout and why it's so rapid is we've been able to take a lot of those learnings and in particular a lot of the innovation and the technology that's been developed by others and apply it to the UK situation. Now I think all countries are fundamentally different. Our geography is very very different to say a Spain or a Portugal which is why the price points are so different. So I think it is difficult to sort of compare like for like when people think about the sort of value and the pricing and the build costs but what you can do is you can take all that loaning and apply it um, to your own situation which is what we've done. So some of the advances with connectorized blocks and you know broader technology and how people are accessing um, MDUs for example and, and the ways they're tackling that it's the same problems we've got so we've definitely taken all of that um, I, I think in terms of what people can learn from us I think what is really helpful is we have a very stable and supportive regulatory and policy environment. There's still stuff we need to help us go further and faster, but actually Ofcom have done a fantastic job in creating the WFTMR, which gives a really good stable base for us as the incumbent, but also for the alternative networks to invest. And I think that regulatory structure um, and the flex within it has really allowed that acceleration over the last few years. So I think for anyone to continue the sort of pace of rollout that we're doing, that regulatory model is worth looking at, but also the way government has set some very clear targets around where they want to get to, in particular that rural coverage. Because I think for all of us, the difficulty is not the first sort of 70, 75%, it's the last bits. You know, even if you don't have the geography of Shetland and mountains in Wales, you've still got some really hard bits to reach and stuff that's expensive. So I think looking at how the UK and the UK government has thought about how you tackle that is, is really helpful for others to think about how do you get that end of the challenge and that last piece done. Uh, absolutely fascinating. Uh, really interesting. Thank you for taking us through quite a, a, a wide range of different topics. So um, really appreciate you coming over and explaining some of that and uh, hope you have a really successful conference. Thank you very much. Great to be here.